Welcome back, you guys, and it's the moment you've been waiting for, the last week of school and television. So, part of me is really bummed. I mean, all of me is really bummed that I'm not getting to spend a lot of time with you face-to-face -face talking about this, because honestly, television writing is probably my favorite part of this course. Um, but you know what? That's okay. We will go over it this way, and I hope you will get some nice takeaways. So let me just give you a brief overview and that let's take it from a standpoint of film versus TV. So some similarities. So basically like your story doesn't change. <clears throat> so you're still, you're still thinking about that typical story arc. Um, so your inciting incident, the rising action, the climaxes and the resolutions both have time constraints and therefore rules of composition. So you got to think about, okay, you know, in a film, 30 minutes for my first act, 60 minutes for my second act, and 30 minutes for my third act. Film has different types of acts, but you still have to think within those, within those timelines. And of course, both of us, both are visual. So people are going to be watching what you're writing. People are not going to be seeing your words. Okay, so formatting is more or less the same, with the exception of act, footers, and multicam. You don't need to worry about this, honestly. Okay, so the part that is different, though, is... And I'm just going to... I'm going to change this a little bit so you can see my cursor. Um, this portion right here. So the conventions in this part right here. So at the end of a film, you're going to see a downward slope into the resolution. But in TV, you're going to see your story arc pop up at the end again to keep you hooked. Now I know we watched Blind Spot already and you saw that happen in that pilot episode. Okay, so let me give you some script examples. This is something called a cold open and this is something different for TV. All right, so you have a cold open and the most famous version of a cold open is going to be on SNL, Saturday Night Live. And if you've not seen it, what rock are you living under? You should go and check it out. So that's a cold open. It hooks you and it gets you interested. So the cold open of Blind Spot would be when um, our girl Jane Doe shows up in Times Square in a bag and she she is unve unveiled, unzipped, and she has tattoos all over her. And um, then it it rolls to the credits. So that's usually what happens. Um, in a, in a cold open and you know the cold open is over when they do roll those those like those intro credits okay so here are some of the differences so you set up in film the story for a great resolution or ending but then what, just like i just talked about so with, with tv you set up the story to keep going and this is important so at 100 episodes, if you make it that long, you have reached something called syndication. And that means um, just there are implications as far as funding and your rights as a writer and as a television show, what can happen as it to be syndicated. And that's definitely a good thing to be syndicated. So um, film is self-contained and it is a three-act structure, whereas with TV, your characters of conflicts and worlds are more expansive and um, has various structures. So a one-hour television show is going to be about six acts. Now, a one hour on Netflix or a place like that is typically about 45 minutes because if you think about like on NBC or any other television um, network that has commercials, out of a one hour show, you're going to have about only like 45 to 50 minutes of real show content and the other 10 to 15 minutes are commercials. So when I say one hour, just know like 45 minutes to an hour is what I'm talking about. With half hour, um, it released half hour or about 23 minutes if you're on network. And um, there, are t there are two different structures as far as cameras. Now, this is probably what confuses most people. So you have something called single cam and you have something called multicam. So a single cam has got various locations. And I know that's counterintuitive, but a single cam, just think about it like you would be more mobile. Like you would have one camera you could travel around, you could travel around to different locations. Okay, a, a multicam is basically like a studio audience. You've got um, several different cameras like on a track filming different sets within a studio. Okay, so that's the difference between those. 
Okay, so types of TV series, and this is your homework, or not your homework, well, I guess it's, everything's homework now, right? Um, but your assignment for this week, other than your lookbook, is going to actually be to watch a television pilot. So similar to how I had you analyze a, a like a movie, I'm going to have you do the same thing for a film, or excuse me, for a TV show. So there are two types of half hours. Now you can watch a half hour or a full hour. I don't care. Like whatever you want to watch, it's free game. So there are two types. One is single cam, like I said, and one is multicam. Your single cam is going to be all over the place. Several different locations. It's not set on a sound stage. There's no laughing track. There, It's free moving. So some examples are um, my personal favorite, which is It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I love The Office too, Parks and Rec. And then these two I've never seen, but Silicon Valley in Atlanta. So I'm sure you can think of your own examples. Multicam. So these are set on a soundstage and it stays within the home of the show. So you're going to get several locations that are like classic to that show. So let's talk about Friends for this. So in Friends, their home of the show is going to be like Monica's apartment um, and then like the guy's apartment, Ross's apartment, and then you also have Central Perk. So really, if you think about it, the home of the show like doesn't really travel outside of those locations very often. Okay, it's more like a stage place. The characters move, the cameras don't. Whereas in the single cam, the cameras definitely move. So you're going to see like, um, I just finished Ozark season, season three and you see like all kinds of different interesting camera angles where like the cameras like can be like above the people and they zoom in. Um, you're going to see a lot, a lot more creativity with, with camera angles in a single cam. Whereas a multicam, like I said, they're on a track and there's like, there's not really they, much they can do with the camera. The characters move, the camera does not. Um, scripts are formatted very differently, but again, like you really don't need to worry about that right now. Okay. Um, okay. So the more types of half hours, so you can either have a sitcom, which is called a situational comma, and it's really like a dilemma of the week. So every week there's going to be some kind of like predicament that the characters get into, like hangout comedies, like they're really lighthearted. Um, so some examples are friends in Seinfeld. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, the office parks and rec. You also have something called serialized. So this is the type where you like, it's going to be harder to just jump in three episodes in. And if you've not watched the first two episodes, like you're going to need to go back and watch them. So Ozark is an example of that, um, except for it's not half hour. Um, it's a full hour. Um, Silicon Valley, Veep, Ballers, Atlanta, Catastrophe, Sex and the City. Those are all serialized. Whereas with our sitcoms, again, like you may want to watch the pilot. But you could pretty much like jump in any episode and kind of get the gist of what's happening and be entertained. Whereas like with this, you'd be totally lost. Um, and then you've got a hybrid, which is obviously just a mix of both. Uh, Modern Family is an example. And that is actually what we would have watched had we been in class. Um, Last Man on Earth, Wrecked, Anchor, or, or excuse me, Archer, and Scrubs. Okay, one hour's. So very similar to this, except there's no sitcom in one hour, but you still have the same serialized. So um, serialized, I'm going to jump to the second one first, is again, like it's an episodic style. And if you don't watch them in order, you're going to be confused. So again, an example of that would be Ozark, uh, Game of Thrones, The Wire, Mad Men, Lost, Breaking Bad, 24, and Quantico. All of those are examples. I'm sure you can think of a, a whole lot more. Um... 13 Reasons Why is a serialized one hour. Um, procedural would be case of the week style show. So if you think about House or ER, Law and Order, Criminal Minds, Bones, all of those NCIS, um, all those are procedural because the premise of the show, not, not the premise, but like, I guess the story changes every week. Like you have the main characters to stick around, but the case that they're working on changes. And then the hybrid, of course, like it's a mix. Um, okay, and then finally, this is the last thing I'm going to go over. You have different types of pilots. There's two types. So there's one called a premise pilot, which is the beginning. So they're going to establish a whole new world, and the rest of the series wouldn't exist without the freestanding episode. So think of a premise pilot as basically like an inciting incident for the whole series. A fantastic um, example is Lost. If you haven't seen Lost, spoiler alert, in the very first episode, a plane crashes on an island. And all those characters from the plane that are survivors are forced to um, survive together. That's the And basically, if that plane crash hadn't happened in that first episode, 
there would be no pilot or there would be no show. So that's that's why it's a premise. Okay, another example is um, The Leftovers, which I've talked about before in class and I've shown you a clip of that of that pilot. But basically like uh, an apop apocalypse type event happens and 3% of the world's population disappears all at once with no explanation. So that's a premise pilot because if that event hadn't happened, we couldn't have the show. Um, so let's go to non-premise. So non-premise is basically the audience's way into a world that already exists. So it, the pilot could have just been easily has been, have been episode five or episode 50. Um, the office is an example. So if, if you think back to the pilot episode of the office, it's basically just like a regular day in their office, but we're introduced to the characters. So that's why it's a non-premise. There wasn't anything specific in that episode that happened that like, changed the course of the characters lives like it just like it was our way into the show so defining the show and this is what your assignment is going to be for this week all right so two assignments your lookbook and you're defining the show and i will make a separate video about your lookbook but you're defining the show so i want you to watch a pilot episode that means the first episode of any series of your choice and I want you to define it. So you're going to describe it with the format, the type, the genre, and then this stands for premise or non-premise. Now this, this descriptor only uh, counts when it's a pilot. Okay. So I want to, again, you got to make sure it's a pilot. So, oh, sorry. Okay. So how would you define Breaking Bad? So this PowerPoint leaves off one important descriptor. Maybe you can tell which. So we've got the format. It's one hour, but the type, um, we need in there that it is a one hour uh, single cam. Okay, so single cam means that it wasn't filmed in a studio, that it was, you know, the camera had many different creative options and went all over to different locations. Um, serialized meaning you have to know what's going on in one episode to understand what's going on in the next, next episode. Crime drama, that's the genre, with a premise pilot. Okay, premise. So again, format, one hour. Type, single cam serialized. Genre, crime drama, with a premise pilot. Okay, always sunny in Philadelphia. By the way, both of these, TVMA, please use caution with what you watch. Um, half hour, single cam, situational comedy with a non-premise pilot. Now, can you abbreviate sitcom as opposed to situational comedy? Absolutely. So, your turn. Now, you can use these or you can use whatever show you want to. Okay, totally your call. Um, and I'm going to put up an assignment for that. That's going to be due Wednesday. And then your lookbook is due Friday, and I will also put up a separate assignment and video for that. All right, happy working. I hope you guys are all doing well.